I Dude, I feel like I could just run into her paper, so I was like in the zone. Wait, you're kidding? Yeah. I actually know you're going to talk about it. Did you finish your book? No, but I was in the zone. I was in the zone writing my intro, so I'm like, I did this zone. So I was like, all my research. I don't know. Do not continue to bring that up. I don't know. 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 Yeah, I Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not a high school for one class. I mean, we did it at least like a part of the whole thing. Okay, you got the seven inch. Okay. Have you had some presentation at all? 25% is the research. Who's saying, do you think your group could be ready Thursday or at the latest Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I think, I mean, for me, it's not here, I think we can be ready. How are you guys doing on the Are you guys accepting? You think you can be ready next Tuesday? Um, I have to know what like, Morgan is going to do because we have to, like, I don't have to do the slides first because we haven't done that. Like, I mean, let's do this. If people are struggling with the paper, this is the difficult part, right? And then, then at least let's try to get the presentations done by like the next week sometime. Okay. You know, so we just move ahead. I want to have one class per group. Go for presentation. So if you guys can be ready in schools, that would be great. I mean, if you're not, then we'll try to do this next How long should the presentation be? What's that? Yeah, I mean, maybe 15 minutes. You can make it longer. Um, but try to at minimum get 15 minutes in. Okay. To take that. Because then we'll have a lot of questions and stuff like that. We're not on if you have any questions, just come up, you know, you're doing something every day. If you guys trust me. You guys have a lot of things to pick up with me. So, what do you do? I know we have the second case of the July. Well, pretty much by next week, everything will be done. By next week. Okay. Part of the last five cases. Case number four. Next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. Are we actually having a final? Yeah, we will have um, we'll the same thing, same format. Five discussion questions. It won't be anything too crazy because the presentations and the paper can make up for a lot. So nothing else to worry about. Make sure everyone get out and vote. Vote, vote, yeah. Yeah, so I have to. Mm -hmm. It's important. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to do, get into groups of uh, four groups, three groups, three groups. We're going to work on that Patreon. Yeah, I'm going to be able to do that. 
<laughs> so guys, thank you for being just so approach. Uh, as a manager, what are you going to be looking at the different steps? At the beginning, the middle, and even at the end. Of the next picture assignment, you're sending someone on assignment in a foreign country. What are the various steps and things you have to be concerned about? What are you sending notes about the company that you see on your own business with? So I can only know what you want to see me about the year and expenses. But I mean, you guys are just going to take a while. And also, I think before you can select better things, before you actually select someone to go, that you need to be concerned about. Who all plans to go overseas to do work? Who wants to do international work? Do you know what field you want to go on or what kind of company? I want to go into consulting, business consulting. I want to go into the overseas project. I mean, it's pretty much that. Absolutely. Is it fun? Absolutely. I wouldn't believe it. That's what I would go for, so we'll see. Are you saying you were working on a project in any specific sector or industry? I was. I'm doing my MBA in analytics and data, so I'm still working on just some data analytics sides of things. So you're going to do your MBA? Yeah. Sorry, I'm going MBA candidates in here or consider doing an MBA? Are you doing an MBA? No, you're not even going to school. You're going to school. What else would you do for this? Uh, I did, um, you know, in the law school, I did some law school as well, too. But, uh, one of the jokes there was, you know, law school is very expensive, and I don't, my thing was, I don't know if they, they teach you a certain amount of but you're not going to be very open minded after that. You kind of program, you know, you program and you think a certain, a certain way. So, one of the jokes there was like, um, I was going to go to law school and I decided to get an education instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's like one of the What about law school? Would anybody consider law school? Is anybody get a master's outside of the business? No. PhDs. So I think about it. I think I want to start working for my first and then figure out what I want. What any of you like to teach? Do you want to mind teaching? Yeah, I mean, I'm really bad at teaching, but. <laughs> I can see my connection. I'll be out so Don't worry, we're, we're all bad. <laughs> so, yeah. There's always one of There's a lot of professors I had here that were very great
<laughs> no, a lot of there's a lot of arguments that most professors are socialists. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, of all your professors here, what do you say? Lean more dependent on the government, or what kind of political views? Oh, uh, more than that. Yeah. Especially at this university, because it's just small ones. Most of the professors are kind of thing. Yeah. For yeah. the most part. Yeah. Yeah. The very so little ones. Mm -hmm. Some of the like, older ones, a little more conservative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, 
they said safety to considering wherever they're going, how you're going to be able to protect your own client, mm -hmm. um, company profile, and then personal. Let me just stop on safety. Who here is from Mexico? When's the last time you've been in Mexico? In the summer? What part? Well, what part? What part? Um, Where? Where? Oh, one more. Um, are there American businesses there? Yeah, like malls. Yeah. Like malls, but you see like any manufacturing facilities for cars like that. So say you're going to Mexico and you're going to you're sending one up, someone over to Mexico to do work and maybe it's an unsafe area, what do they do for that person? What do the people who work in, in manufacturing facilities for in Mexico? Do once they leave the facility and have to go around in very dangerous areas. Do, they, do you know if they have like any security detail for employees or uh, special housing where it's just in the zone? I don't think so. You don't think so? Because I mean, I had an uncle who I think he owned like the greenhouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know he works in a dangerous area, but like always really make sure that they all go in and meet together. So they stay in groups. Yeah. Okay. And you go on before it gets dark. Yeah. Hey, that was a good answer. There's a huge problem. There's a huge problem with that in Mexico. You know, obviously. Once they know you're American, but then you can come out from the next What they do is that one person will take everyone else out. So they're all riding groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they do a car for Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are things to also consider when you're working in unsafe areas. Um, have you guys been anywhere outside of Saudi Arabia, say in the Middle East, dangerous areas? No. The same? No. no. So you've never really been in unsafe areas? No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something you would consider if you're working in a hostile environment. People know they're going to kidnap you or go for ransom or something like that. You know, what do you do in those situations? All right, what else you got up there? Uh, um, just safety, uh, company profile, and then personal animals. So, uh, what is the company wanting to achieve? What is that person going out to trying to achieve by going over to? Yeah. All right, great, great. Thanks. Uh, group two, what do you come up <clears throat> Oh, uh, you guys. We're in the same group. Oh, that's not Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, I was came up with the uh, fifth in the country. I've been there a lot. I find it. I'm um, Kasha on this time. It's the best of the time that I'm Kasha that he's going through. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, language, uh, they speak in a different country. Um, experience. Experience. Because the best time to be is the top of the bottom. Um, how the construction of the thing works. Also, the block allows for me to step on my other. Yeah, absolutely. You never know if you might be breaking a lot. Yeah. Just think here in the United States. Yeah. Anybody ever been to California? Yeah. Uh, so here in Chicago, it's a red light, it's a no dump lock sign. What do we do? Come on, anyway, because nobody cares. I do run across Michigan and or something. <laughs> But in many parts in California, you know, you get a $75 ticket every time you jail. And they will stop. You might buy off this cross the street, there's no cars. You will get a ticket, they'll stop and make a lot of money with that. Especially for people coming here, not from California, you just want to go to So I mean, yeah, I think there's subcultures in the United States, so we can even apply this to 50 different states, right? You got 50 different things going on. Include Samoa, Puerto Rico, stuff like that. There's even more. People do things differently, different laws, right? I carry a gun. So I had to get a Florida permit and a Utah permit in order to travel the country. You know, so because it doesn't apply. You have one permit, you cross into a state, you pull it over, you got a legal gun. So there's two consequences. I mean, so you can apply this to say to the United States to say, hey, I'm going to work in another state. What are the laws here? The elections today, there's 50 different election laws. 
right? <coughs> some don't have very good roles. Some states don't absolutely don't have it. They just go from the bed. Um, so yeah, definitely you know understanding those laws because with this, that's going to cut into your budget having to do the legal process overseas, getting the water here, etc. So, so. uh, what else? Um, the standard in that country, so we can determine the enough salaries of the top of the business. And finally, the transportation. So the GP of this kind of is a power to move on to the business. Yeah, I mean, maybe we set up a deal with an Uber overseas. You know, you contact Uber, their uh, headquarters in that area, so you have a group of, you have a corporate account with Uber. And everybody works in the same platform. Everybody can kind of monitor where everyone's going for safety issues um, to make sure that everyone's safe. And you can also just budget. I have a corporate account with Uber, so you can really detail everything out for a multitude of people. <laughs> uh, okay. What did you guys have? Um, you were talking about you guys speak the language, which we kind of discussed with translators and that, and that kind of issue. What are the immigration laws? How easy is it for you to immigrate to the country? How long is it to be there? Do you have to pay immigration fees? If I know when I studied abroad, I had to pay like 300 euros to be there for six months. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to like account for that. No way to kind of break the laws if you're staying too long or whatnot. Um, do they know the culture? Are you going to have to educate them before then? Are you going to have to have programs once the work through issues? What is the standard of living? You want to be able to provide a good standard of living to your employees so you need to know what the standard of living is in the country you're going to. Um, incentives, you know, child incentives, living stipends, do they have a family? Is there going to be paid time off for holidays? Do they get to come home? Are you paying for that? Um, transportation, translators. Are they a good fit? Are they open minded and adaptable? Do they have family here? Is it going to be hard for them to leave their family if you're asking them to go for only a couple months? Do they do that? If not, do they come with them? Um, a lot of people, even if it's not going to be a family, their caregivers for someone else, maybe like their um, aunt or uncle is in the hospital. It's like, oh, those are just going to take their to talk to that person. Do they have experience traveling? Do they have a the company image? And do you talk to them? Yeah, that's a really good book. That's a long book. Yeah, I mean, I think the main point is really kind of put yourselves in another person's shoes as a manager. Uh, people are not units, they're not robots. Everybody has a lot of strength. People are married, people have kids, people have other issues, other things going on. So you really have to put to play all of those various factors, communicating with that person to see if they're the correct person to do the job. They may be the greatest business person, they can speak the language, but they may have family issues that won't allow them to be gone for one, two, or three years. Uh, before we kind of go more into it, these are just some averages of uh, conversation for expatriates in Chicago, Tokyo, and Mexico. Um, call those cost of living loans. What do you guys think the average? Yep, or Chicago. For someone overseas that comes here, can I take it? Yep. Okay. We think the average is the base salary and cost of living. Send them some money. Individual for families. Individual. Forty-five for individual. Yeah, so someone, someone over to Chicago will get a big salary and the cost of living. So factor cost of living. And then that's a lot. And this is average. This is across different industries, different sectors. Let's start numbers. Expires in 50, but in the middle. How much? 45 or 50. 45 50. I think it's about 60% of the population area. On average, now, there's a lot of very good paying jobs. When you're working with a company that does international work, you're going to pay a decent amount of money because there's a lot of transportation costs, etc. 
representation. No, there's not a hundred percent. But with that, <coughs> they factor all of that into that hundred percent. Would you take that down? And what's the private education? Well, if you have, have a family of people that don't have education, obviously you're not a citizen, so you won't get funded. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What about Tokyo? Same thing, Americans over to Tokyo. So what do you think the base salary and cost of living allows to be? How much? Thirty to twenty thousand. Anybody else? Other thing they give you though it is in addition. Yeah. Is there a possibility of longer sentences in our city? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to that case, and possibly still looking at a great disagreement in 102. Yeah. Wow. Wait, so doesn't the possibility take away from the case? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely You're right. So, these are going into here. But these are just averages, so. No, no, I'm sorry. You say, is it coming from here? Yeah, is it? The, no, 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 that's just that's just really your salary and, and other things you consider cover food, we're talking other things you would have to buy this to live. No, so these are actually in addition. You get 30 for housing, 30 for relocation, 30 for private education, and 12 grand for two trips per year. Yeah, this is just you don't have a home, you're not gonna get that. So they're very expensive. So everything you have to do the conversion rate. Maybe it equals actually less, maybe more for less. <clears throat> what about sending someone over to Mexico City from the US? What do you think? 50. 50? <clears throat> pretty close. 75. Hmm. 75. Yeah. Yeah. But they also give This is not everybody. You know what I'm saying? But this is just the average. So if you can pay for to pay for you go back home. For for prison. Well, okay. Then you do a cost of living in Mexico. It's lower, so maybe a guess. My cousin, she um she's an accountant, but she's an accountant for an international firm. Mm -hmm. But she's from Mexico and they used to like send her out to travel everywhere. Um and right now she's in a visa in Texas because their work they sent her out to the United States for two years. And um, she says that like in US dollars, an accountant that makes like thirty thousand a year lives a very like they're middle class, higher upper class, and then her and her husband stay combined at age sixty, that that's enough for them to like have a really nice house and two, three cars, take family vacations, raise a family, yeah. at cable, like she says that 
you know, like they're pretty well off. And that's like something in Mexico, so it's like obviously they got a raise from the United States, but yeah, I like convert that into like back into pistol because they go back in May or something. So they're like even better off. <laughs> like I said, you can apply to the United States and try to get that offer in Oklahoma. Right, well, like, right, right off, right? Then you do the conversion rate of the cost of living here, you might as well. I'm a millionaire here, you know? <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, when companies have international operations, you're getting a lot more money than if you're just a regional, got a job in Chicago, downtown, etc. Right? Because they're not going to give you, but you're going to get healthcare, which is a great thing. A lot of digital marketing companies are really good because just the environment is good at that. But you're getting healthcare, you're getting life insurance, you're getting maybe stock options, you're getting uh, a lot of different stuff. So marketing here in the United States, marketing is a really good field to be. Uh, any questions? Another thing to consider, <coughs> this sounds simple, there's some more time here. There's taxes, right? So if you're working on a country, you have to pay taxes. If you go to Europe, a lot of countries in Europe, income tax would be 40 to 50 percent. Like, wow, I just cut my. my they can directly have. Why? Because they, they, a lot of places are kind of socialist. They have free health care. Like Canada. You know, so they have free health care and they have free education. In Sweden, somebody has to pay for that. You pay for that through taxes. So if you go there and you work, you know, oh, wow, you know, yeah, they offer maybe 125000 but really 60000 and the cost of living is expensive. You know, you may not make it as great as you thought, but you know, it just looks good on paper, but you got to really break down <coughs> a lot of different things. So going back to uh, expats assignments, first thing you want to do Potential problems. You guys stated that sometimes there's cultural problems, people are familiar, family, family issues, spouses, which is family. Some people may have. Um, They may already have some sort of relationship with the government or a relationship with people there or a political affiliation or something. That could be bad because there are big conflicts of enemies, in which case you would not want to see some sort of Another thing is you gotta worry about that coordination with the headquarters. This person would be very responsible and accountable for the communication back at home base and about everything that's going on. If you have a manager over there overlooking tons of people um, and they're not telling you what's actually going on, the company could be at a denial and you won't know until the truth comes out. Um, so, you want to get people who are <laughs> coordinated very well with, with what you got going on back home. A lot of people experience culture shock. Um, and actually subculture shock too. You know, there's different cultures within cultures. Um, a lot of people will have issues with kind of how things are. There is actually various stages in the culture shock. Um, there's four states. These are kind of psychological. And this is what you have to monitor people through. You have to monitor your employees or your managers through this process because people will fail miserably. 
that have anxiety and that have stress. They can't do the job anymore. That's on you. And if you're doing international work and someone says, I can't do this anymore, it's too stressful, it's too much of the cultures. Culture is just too big. I didn't think it was would be that. You're going to lose a, a lot of money. Um, so you have to monitor your managers and employees through this process. The first is honeymoon, and that's kind of the um, and everything in life. The honeymoon process. You go, you land, it's something new, you say what? Oh my god, this is the greatest place ever. Hey mom, I'm like, oh, you won't believe the skyline here and the people and the food and right? That's the initial. You love it, it's happy. The second part is people experience irritation and hostility. They begin to actually communicate with the people there. And actually communicating, your managers are communicating with the employees there who are nationals, who are citizens of their country. They say, you know what, then this is this communication here sucks. Um, these people don't want to listen to what I do, and this is what I communicate. Um, and it's hurting our bottom line. So we got a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, but this irritation and hostility in the second phase, culture shock. Uh, third is a uh, gradual adjustment. You leave somebody to do a job, eventually they'll adjust. They will mess up a hundred times. They'll talk about quitting. They'll say, I'm something that's not good. Uh, but if you leave someone there long enough, Human nature is geographically adjust. That's just human nature. <clears throat> so you really have to kind of work them through this phase to make sure they don't break down. So because if you can get them here to this third phase, gradual adjustment, um, they should be successful there. And I experienced that too with people I see now. A lot of people just they don't like the food. Mm -hmm. Right, so the first thing, oh, it's great. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do like Anthony Bourdain and try all this different food. People get sick, and then have to figure out their diet, like what's safe to eat for them and what's not safe to eat. Uh, living standards, transportation can be an issue. People sometimes feel isolated, like, um, well, if I can't go out and have fun and get a drink with once in a while, you know, life kind of decreases. And if they stay long enough, they'll get to a period of biculturalism. In which case, people see a value in differences. People start saying, well, you know, there's value in how these people live. Like, there's value in compared to the United States. <laughs> I think what happens is, once people come back to that, most people say, hey, I like the United States. I love America. Oh, you wouldn't want to live in any other country in the world. You know, because of the laws, because of this. But once you actually go and spend a prolonged period of time, you start to really see that there is value in how people live. And their systems exist for a reason. It's not just made up stuff. It exists because it works. Just like our democracy works here. But it probably doesn't because we're split 50 50. We're a very divided country. We just don't communicate. Other places, people say, I hate directly to you. Here, we'll kind of hide it. <laughs> we'll hide it, but you know, people hate each other. You know? But we'll hide it because it's this American way, you know, kind of keep to yourself, stuff like that. But then you say, I can't get out of that. There's nothing to get done. If people don't communicate, I agree with this. So the communication is really big there. Your second way. Second way for your next facts is how do you begin the selection process? So you select your candidate. So 
So they have to be the best match for the country that you're sending them to. You guys mentioned adaptability and flexibility. Then you want to consult reassignment teams. An assignment is just that, it's just one assignment. Obviously, people will be reassigned. Either they get reassigned back to their host country, or they get assigned to another country. And so you have these initial conversations say, hey, we need you to go here, but in about six months, in about a year, we were going to send a go to Russia. Um, and so you start planning those needs for Russia way in advance. You start going to maybe a year, six months ahead of time. The third thing you'll work on is your contract. <laughs> A lot of assignments are contract, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, for Tiberius, um, people work on a contract. So they have a contract assignment to a particular area around the world, for a particular assignment, particular strategy, and particular consulting. So you're going to negotiate financials, and there's a leeway. You say, hey, you know, I'm going to need more money than this for my kid, my wife. Uh, where am I going to be living? Let me do some research. Or, you know, people actually give their input on where they're going to be living. Hey, I found an Airbnb that I could do for a year or six months. Um, and they're like, yeah, I'll do this because they're not giving me a living allowance. And maybe they're not giving me a living allowance. Very cheap. That one should have a really good salary. You might cost a living this time. Training, you decide with your manager if they need specific training. You know, you give them language training, cultural training, um, business operations training in a particular country, legal training, how to deal with kind of policy issues and legal issues. Our next stage, you're going to do an assessment on their development. How are they doing in this country so far? We've been at three months. How are they doing? How can you measure certain things? Maybe you go there in person. You go there to see the operations, you see the manufacturing facility, you see the storefront, you see whatever kind of business you have going on. You go there in person and assess to see what your employees are doing, how the managers are doing. And you can, <coughs> sometimes visual is, is much better than just you know, electronic communication. So you may have to physically go there. If there's issues, you might want to provide a local mentor. Maybe you do this at the beginning, too. You find someone who knows everything about the country, how things are done. Uh, and you use that as a mentor to manage. Talk about um, maybe coming back home, so repatriate. And this is normally after successful assignment.
So someone may have adjusted too much to this culture, but there's a, a culture shock coming back to the US. And maybe you've got psychological issues with that too. So you want to make sure that the person is coming back to do come back home, you're gonna go back to your position here and work that they don't have issues, withdrawal issues. Maybe they go through the amount of depression. Like, hey, you know, I went to this great country and they come back here, this place sucks. I want to have a move there and start a whole new life. So you have to work with those things too. A lot of times people do go live, but it worked there for a very long time. I, I'm actually, uh, personally, uh, I've been to Cape Town, South Africa. I personally think it's the most gorgeous city in the world. Plain and simple. You can go on Google Images or YouTube and just look at it. It's at the bottom of Africa. This is where the Indian Ocean meets the Atlantic Ocean. It looks like Malibu, California. It's mountains, it's green mountains, it's uh, inner city stuff. So like this kind of like an LA of South Africa. Gorgeous place. The food is fantastic. Um, the laws are not straight. And if you're an American, you could easily get like a Two, three hundred thousand on the line. You have just a decent credit. Just a decent amount of anything there. Because they want your business. So, I mean, there are the issues you be like, you know what, I'm planning in two, three years to go live in South Africa. I'm not, you know, I don't want to be here. You can have that issues with managers and employees. But check out Cape Town, you guys have a good chance. Yeah, just Google Image or YouTube. Cape Town is phenomenal. Place. I mean, you drive inside a road, there's a bad You know, you're going to the There's ostrich. There's a. It's very cheap, very, very cheap to live there. I think one, one place, one I went to a place that I thought in American dollars would be $340 to live was like 30 bucks. And it was just like, oh, go through my lobster and like, do different stuff that you would have to eat. Um, I did the shark diving there. You did? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, so the shark are in a cage? And yeah, you're in a cage. They used to do it to where they hang the person actually off the boat with no cage to where you actually would die, even though you're attached to a boat or something. But now you're in a cage with my bias. Yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, you know, sharks don't attack human beings on purpose. If you get bit if you're a surfer, it goes on the stake. The shark will do something. Well, you have to be the stake. No, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm so even, sharks are almost essentially blind. Um, so unless they smell blood or something like that, then that's where they're going to go and they're going to bite. So even there, when you throw the drop of meat, when you're in this cave on the side of the boat, and the shark goes in deep, and obviously you may feel that there's six things on there, maybe that would come, but he just goes around. He's not attacking the cage or anything like that. But try that there, so. <laughs> it's cheap, I'm telling you, you go there, and there was people from everywhere, people from Florida, from like LA, people from India, from everywhere. Like mostly everybody spoke English. South Africa is speak English, and I'm not finding a new language. That's a huge, what they call colored population there. Colored here means black, over there means mixed. So people like Indian, like Pakistani, Afghan, but they've been there for, their family's been there a few hundred years. You know, they're South African, that's what they are. Um, so it's very diverse, yeah. You know, they had a part of that, but I think people are kind of, which they're starting to go over there. But, uh, yeah. I think they spoke, um, like that's the original Dutch uh, language, but no, the predominant language is English. Afrikaans is for a lot of people speak it for natives, but that's we don't speak that in all things or So like the government is all English is that yeah. Um but no okay, Cape so That's what I said to myself. Trust me. Um, well, what else I did? 
the gun range, so that the gun range in the mountains. I think we should AK 47s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my wife actually shot AK 47 shotguns. They let you shoot two guns at once. They let you do crazy stuff. And you're in the mountains, so you're in the mountains, so everything you shoot is like you can hear the reverberation. Stuff. We didn't have a license for that. Right? Not license or nothing. Oh, no, you don't need a license. You just show up. Yeah, I mean, I tried to do it here, but they told me I have to have like a license or whatever, like an ID, like I don't know what it's called. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you know, a FOIA card. Yeah, uh, that's what it is, yeah. Or a concealed carry. Concealed carry now is all of them. You know, you don't need a FOIA card. But there, I mean, there's restrictions on guns for the people who live there. But as an expatriate or a tourist or what have you, you can shoot that. The laws on that home. Um, so, like I said, if you're an American going out there, they treat you like a king. And literally, I tell you, that's, to me, that's like 20 bucks. You would think that'd be a few hundred dollars to shoot the salary of guns here in the United States, like just doing whatever, like being crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it was for an hour, so it was a lot, it was a lot of show. A lot of fun. So. Not to get too far, but okay, one other great thing. <laughs> So, yeah, I think you're in Africa, in South Africa. So there's a safari, there's the real safari. Not Lincoln Park Zoo. No. <laughs> hey, it's the real safari. I have videos of me like laying the cheetahs and lions with my hand. Um, Do you want like that, like the way you're inside the cage? That the animals are like around you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they actually take it to the real safari too. So maybe they throw me out. I mean, I think there's still sort of protection between you or some sort of barrier between you and the animal. When you want to go pet them or something? Yeah. If you're in a facility, you need to pet them. Because you go out and you just see the difference. You just see lions and giraffes and just world beasts and stuff like that. So there they have everything desert, safari, mountains. Um, Everything that we kind of want to live there a little bit about the weather is like sunny. Average is like 70 degrees. Yeah, so actually, so I think I experienced it. When I came back up, I got yeah, I had plenty of lions and coming back here. Which, <laughs> maybe I have some mental issues. I need to work out. Any questions? How long were you over there? I was there for. A month and a half. So I went to Johannesburg and went to Cape Town. Now Johannesburg is different. It's the largest city here. But how does that compare? No. No. Uh, it, can, it can be fun. It's great. It's pretty cool. But the po the poverty there that you will see is you'll go down and you'll see you'll, you'll feel like you're downtown. And then you walk like six blocks over and you feel like you're in a third world country. You know, so you won't feel maybe as secure. Yes. Have you ever experienced any consultant where they like really had so much money that they wanted to come back for a while? Um, I'm not really no, sure. I think there's for me there's always initial discussion, initial research mm -hmm. to expectancies and bad expectancies. You know, so sort of saying, hey, you know, if this happens, are you willing to keep the season? If this happens. Yeah. We kind of had that discussion initially. It can happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it can happen so far, but um, it can happen. I mean, especially, so I'm going to program also for a soccer team in Johannesburg in this township called Alexander. This is the largest township there. Essentially, the township's like a gap. People live in shacks, barely running water, literally live in shacks. So in the shack, you walk in, it's one room. There's 20 people, like literally, like not over exactly. It's like 20 people. Um, so if you go there and say we contract with a nonprofit and mental health development and trauma, et cetera, and you're there every day and solving the cases and working with people, you could have issues. Maybe there's a fear of HIV or something. There's a fear of a bacteria or a virus or a fear of being attacked or you know, whatever. Um, 
So, I mean, it can happen, but normally it's really resilient people that I work with, like people who don't care if they went to Syria, like right now, like they were doing, knowing that I was or whatever. <clears throat> I think it maybe depends on the nature of the job, too. You, know. you guys still want to do international work? With all of that? Um, so on average, most companies do a rotation. Rotation of managers. You send somebody out for a year, you bring them back home, you don't want to give them global exhaustion. You send them back out in another six months, you bring them back home. And that's kind of the process you do it. Um, most big assignments, I would say, is two to three years. And I said we work with a large company, maybe we work for GE, maybe we work for Samsung, maybe we work for Goldman Sachs, maybe we work for something like that. Two to three years, um, that way you really get to understand the culture and then be able to train and transfer what you've learned. Do that cultural transfer and knowledge transfer to the other person coming in. You know, you get your experience, you know, you get it to someone else so that they get to know each other. You can kind of repeat that process. <clears throat> um, that's pretty much it. Everything is really about just training and mentoring. Um, Kind of looking at technology, transfer of technology, make sure the infrastructure is there, and a two way transfer. Um, and that's about it. Any questions? Any questions about international work? What's your biggest culture shock you've had yet in a long country? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it has to be South Africa because it's it's, it's great, but in Johannesburg specifically, it's like the widest range of poverty and money you will ever see in your life. Um, and then there's also the thing is, a place like South Africa, you can really resonate with. The United States. So, therefore, it makes me start thinking about issues in the U.S., right? We have huge racial issues that have been going on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and so, you see people's discrimination against certain ethnic groups and how that transfers over to economics. Um, and for me, I think that probably the, the most impact. Because what I saw was that economics transferred into disease, famine, HIV, AIDS, crime, all that different stuff. So my theory is if you can change the economics, you can change the human behavior of large groups of people. But if you don't change the economics, you don't change the behavior. And then what you do is you put the blame on a person's individual behavior but you don't think of the process that kind of enables that behavior. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's just an argument here in the United States. So it's like, hey, pull, your, pull, pull yourself up by your bootstrap. You're responsible for what you do. You can do anything that anybody else can do. But I think if it is in a system to where you don't really know that, right? You know the behavior of your peers, of your neighborhood, of your community. We didn't see that here in Chicago. So me coming from Chicago saying that is like Inglewood, Highland Park, Lincoln Park, Barrington, uh, North Shore. Yeah, so you start to see a lot of really bad areas. And it's like, man, you know, this, your socks are your cubs. Why are your socks? Because the city's essentially divided. Your north side or your south side. Right? It's really like two cities. Become the north side, obviously. Become, yeah, these people don't have the problems that we have on the south side. There's a lot of problems. 
So is that and John Hunter. That comes aside because I think it has to resonate from where you're coming from. Yeah. Right now, that's the problem in my own country. This is totally is the same deal. It's just exacerbated to a high degree. Um, that's for me, I, but I think typically what I try to observe is that, <clears throat> which is a characteristic you guys probably need to have, is to try to be as unbiased as possible. To say, even if I went to Mexico, I go to Nuevo Laredo, a lot of places high crime. And you see mutilations we had into because of drugs, um, money, weapons, um, stuff like that. You just have to be open minded like, hey, this this comes from something. You know, this is not just a negative thing. There's been mutilations in Mexico for hundreds of years. The Aztecs and Incas and stuff like that. So maybe you draw a line and say, hey, you know, maybe this is a historical cultural thing. And now she's transferred over to money, you know, money and power and authority. Um, so I try to make those things. I don't just try to say people are barbaric. It's like, no, it all stems from something. Things do stem from a lot of different things. Right? Even in Islam. Right? So in the Middle East, you say, oh, we don't see this type of violence here. We don't see public executions, public beheadings. Right? You don't see different things. Um, but the history and the culture and things, they are what they are. That's the system there, right? So you can't say what people do are wrong or right. You can. You can draw a pain. But it doesn't necessarily mean the truth. You know, so you always have to consider that. No matter how heinous it is. Um, and what you do, what your purpose is to go there and try to shed light on something like that's, that's really just your purpose. And you try to shed light on like, oh, you know, okay, that's what's going on. What about this? You give people options. And then they say, okay, then you run up this way, but here's some other options. Maybe I take this and maybe I die. And you can't have a democracy everywhere in the world. It just doesn't exist. I mean, you can't work for everybody. You've got different cultures, ethnic groups, histories, heritage. Beliefs, it just doesn't work. And that's our problem here in the US. We want to impose democracy and capitalism everywhere around the world. Well, it's not just so that's it. Yeah, I think um, back all of that stuff in and try to remain as unbiased as possible. And, and you, sh you personally should be successful. You can't control your external just environment. Um, so next week, let's try to get the presentations, at the very least, the presentations. You know, maybe you can still work on your paper, and just get it in by the end of the semester. If you're struggling with the paper aspect. Let's try to get the presentations up and going so we can, on Tuesday, start. Jose, so maybe you guys are... Yeah, I'll talk to more with Yeah, I'll send you an email. Okay, send me an email. Maybe I'll send everyone in a kind of reminder uh, presentation class. Maybe I'll try to have another guest speaker coming for the semester. Because technically on the syllabus, we have none of the presentations after this and then final. But um, I'll, I'll do some more stuff. Okay. Maybe we'll do like a mock board of directors in here and have people argue, one person here, one person here, one person here. Do you guys like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll think something that I'm able to do. Alright guys, have a good one. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, she is actually with the demographics. Well, yeah, I did the economic structure, so we just kind of like. External something, like, did you uh, have the notes for, like, when you had it? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I was just a. Uh, yeah, I'll just update the document and just see what's missing and I'll just Yeah. Is that, is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, uh,